And we are back from the Norwegian Championship of Poker in Dublin, Ireland, the main event where 46 players are remaining. We have a start field of uh, 1,263 plus are 12,000, 24,000 with a 3,000 ante. And uh, the remaining 46 players now guaranteed at least 4,545 euros. 154,174 euros for first price. And we are going to play it down to a final table. This uh, table still uh, up the Riksen. It's a chip leader, plays 1, 2.5 uh, million. But look at uh, Ogeran up to one point, well, ne nearly 1.4 million now. So. Uh, he is going to be a contender, as expected. And when we get down to five or six tables, I always think that that's when you can really feel and smell and sense the final table. It's, it's got to be on your mind. And sometimes play slows down because I just, it's, you get that close and you don't get a lot of opportunities to get that close. And when you get down to four or five tables, I think you can really sense that, yeah, I can get there. And another advantage for Olga, he's been, you know, in this spot before. A lot of the remaining 46 players have never been this deep in the tournament, so uh, at least a tournament of this size. So uh, I would think he, he would have an advantage against a lot of the other players. And he's been at the TV table before. I mean, in the PCA, this uh, was his sixth place finish. So he uh, should be used to that as well. Big okay. size race from Stig Andre. Takes it down pre flop. Yeah, Stig Andre with not a lot of maneuverability. But he's uh, been able to make a couple of raises. He raised all in when he first sat down and been able to get the raises through a couple of times and building a little more chip stack. So here we see the outer tables. And, uh, you can also see there's a small rail building. You see that red line, which uh, means that it's only the players who are allowed on the inside now. Usually during a tournament, you can just walk freely between the tables now that we're so, so deep and so close to uh, crowning in the Norwegian Championship. I think it's fair that the players are kind of left a little bit on their own. I mean, if they want to talk to somebody, they can go over to the rail freely. But uh, I mean, it can be quite annoying if you are in a big hand and you have a friend of another player who comes by and they start talking and laughing. And, and actually, some players don't like to be on tables that are closest to the rail. Uh, they just get bothered by any activity behind them and uh, they prefer to be further inside. So the rail can be uh, bothersome to a table that's close to it. We have an all in. Peran all in for his remaining uh, chips, 188,000, and uh, well, he gets through. Yeah, but then again, you have players like Dan from the Grand, who, who's, I mean, I would think so friendly and always, you know, taking pictures with people and signing autographs, and I mean, you would think that that would kind of interfere with his play. No, you, and it would for most most players, but it, it comes so naturally to him. And he's actually, you know, the def we talked about being an ambassador if you're the main event champion. He's never been the main event champion uh, of the World Series, but he is the, the best ambassador to poker I've ever seen. And he, he, he learned how to do that at a very young age. He was doing that when he was in his 20s. And he's gotten better at it, and he's almost 40 now. And somehow he's able to deal with the fans and deal with the rail and come back and play, and he doesn't lose his focus. So we just got word that at uh, 7 o'clock local time here in Dublin, there is going to be a heads up final in the Norwegian Championship of uh, Poker. And that means that uh, Ingve Sten has busted from the main event. And uh, Ingve and Elizabeth Hill have agreed on playing that final at uh, 1900 hours local time. That would be 2100 hours Central European time. For those of you in the other time zones, so you'll just have to figure that out for yourself. But I mean, in just over an hour. 
and I am not really sure if uh, we actually were told that we uh, might stream that final table. Yeah, I didn't get that either. Yeah, but we'll find out well, after uh, this level players are going to go on a dinner break and uh, we will also take uh, a short break. <laughs> and I just got just gotten uh, the message we are going to stream the heads up final table so we are going to leave uh, the main event and we are going to stream the heads up final with the uh, cards up. Well, we are going to see the cards. The players aren't going to play with cards up, but we are going to oh, see that, the that whole cards. That would give me a, an opportunity to win the heads up title those cards up. <laughs> yeah. That's my best shot. So, uh, I mean, that should be really something to watch. I mean, in the stand and Elizabeth Hill, two, I would dare to say two of uh, the best tournament poker players in uh, Norway. And, uh, I mean, that's got to be exciting. And to see it with a whole card sub, I mean, a head sub final. I, I mean, that's, I've never commented that before, and that's going to be really fun, Norman. I've commented before, and uh, it's not as much fun as you think. <laughs> no, it's a lot of fun. And uh, those are two terrific players. And for the Norwegian Championship, that's exciting that people can watch that live stream. Absolutely. So we are going to broadcast that. Or they are going to start at uh, 7 o'clock local time. And we, uh, well, we have to go on a delay. So um, I would think, uh, uh, well, heads up, maybe maybe half an hour, maybe even 20. Yeah, we, I think half an hour. So uh, that means that we are going to be showing uh, the heads up final at uh, 19. 30 local time approximately and for those of you who do not want to wait for the 30 minute delay you can call me directly on my cell phone 424-277-2456 i will give you results and whole cards as they happen well as you will not have the opportunity to see the whole cards live, Norman. I, I'd be very impressed if you are able to do that, because well, we are going to comment to the delay. You are speaking out of turn once again. I will be able to see the whole cards live. As you know, to get those whole cards, we do always hire somebody who sits under the table and looks at the cards through the glass. I have taken that job <laughs> for free. I am not being paid. I will be under the table. I'm also going to be served a very good meal down there, I'm told. But so I'll be under the table seeing the whole cards live and I'll be relaying them via cell phone if you want to call International Rates Apply. Hold it on, raise the button. Called by Roy in the big blind. Flop comes 994 with two uh, spades. Since I have ordered Chateaubriand for under the table, that's usually for two. So I am welcoming the first person. And you don't have to buy a raffle ticket for this. First person <laughs> who wants to eat with me under the heads-up table while I'm looking at the whole cards live. Let the tournament director here know, and uh, we will take uh, the first person who responds to that. Roy well, uh, checks. I'll give it out uh, 56,000. calls six of clubs on the turn quick check from Roy oh there we go 110 oh 101 of course again we call this is building up to a very big pot for pairs on the river six of hearts my checks look here it's like 150 something 151 yeah Quick action in this end. 
that's a third of the pot. And he gets called. Ten high. And ten high. So Roy will probably take this down. Ace Jack, he called with, oh, he called with Ace high. Heck of a call. Well, yeah. good call. Yeah, the flush draw from the beginning, right? Yeah, they both yes. had. Yeah. They both had. That is a good size putt for yeah, Roy. Yeah, but still, I think he, I think, uh, I think he has to call there with the ace high. I mean, the, the board double paired. And uh, so much in the middle. And the, I mean, when Olga bets a third of the pot there. That's, uh, well, of course he doesn't have to, but I think that's perfectly fine. And he was right. So Roy up to 1.4 million now. We'll get down to uh, just below 1 million. Still playing 41 big blinds. Yeah, he's in no rush. He just needs to keep doing what he's been keeping doing. Blind still 12,000, 24,000 with a 3,000 ante. Oh, we have an all in. Ivan is all in. Hold the ground to Sigondre on the button. He folds. And uh, Roy is still stacking his chips. He folds to Opla in the big line. Who uh, shows and folds. Seven deuce for uh, Opla. One of my poker initiatives that never caught on was uh, when you go all in to say Heidi Ho, which I thought was uh, just, again, a nice, kind, gentle way to go. Heidi Ho is just a very friendly term. Heidi Ho. <laughs> Heidi Ho. People do it on occasion. And I get emails from people who do it in, uh, on home games and uh, small casinos. But in general, I mean, I put I put down the flag for Heidi Ho, and people rejected it. No Heidi Ho across America. I remember uh, watching that, Norman. So, um, I, well, it's kind of a good idea, but still, it's not very intimidating. And yeah, I don't I don't think a guy like Atley would go Heidi Ho. No, you're right. That's a good deep voice there for yeah. him. But it's for it's, you know different strokes for different folks so a certain person it's more appropriate for i don't expect the uh, to, to go as you said hardy ho different strokes for different folks i'm i'm gonna use that a lot i'm gonna steal that expression well it isn't mine i don't know where it comes from but it's uh you know and actually in horse racing they go different courses for different horses some horses do well at, at, at certain tracks or on the grass or on the dirt so that's another one which you know i don't know if you have a gambling problem you're gonna go bet horses anytime but different courses for different horses I have a lot of problem, problems. Gambling <laughs> is not one of them, fortunately. Uh, I just got some information. We are not going to stream the heads up final oh. because that is going to take like three and to four hours to finish. Yeah, and it might. But still, it might be over in five minutes. You never know about these things. But with two good players like Elizabeth and Inga, it's probably going to take quite a while. But go ahead. Yeah, um, so we're going to keep on streaming the main event as we are nearing the final table ever so slowly. Am I going to lose my Chateaubriand order? I was going to be working the final table, the heads up underneath the table. Yes, you will get noodles instead. See, that's a big difference. I mean, that's not even close. You know how many times in a, a given life people eat Chateaubriand on the average? Less than once, I would imagine. The average person worldwide eats Chateaubriand less than once in a life. Right? Yeah. Well. So I was going to have an opportunity to eat Chateaubriand in about 30 minutes from now or an hour from now and it's been taken away from us. That's a bad beat. Yeah. And that was a bad, bad beat story. And I mean, I'm uh, tired of those. Yeah, I, I actually had a phone that people could ring in and tell their bad beat stories and I charged like $50 a minute. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, well. You, you owe me 10 bucks. And somebody stole that idea, I don't Andreas. understand your yeah. math. If it's 50, uh, whatever your math was for, how much per minute? Uh, 50 bucks. Oh, 50 bucks a minute, so I do owe you 10 bucks for my 12 seconds. Of, I think so, yeah. Okay. Ish. Somebody sure. actually stole your idea here. Uh, v Men Poker, they put up a sign at their, uh, at their kind of 
desk that said uh, phone charging 20 euros and bad beat stories 30 euros. <laughs> I have not asked them if they got any takers, but they might have. Well, since we're not going to be able to live stream the heads up, I am going to start a Uno sit and go. <laughs> and I will be a favorite. I am an Uno savant. Yeah. I, I beg to differ. I'm actually. Oh, uh, uh, you're pretty good at I'm a state champion of you know in Norway. Like wow! Yeah. And you're a better card player than I am, Andre. So uh, I, no, I, no, 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 I'm not. But Uno, that's my game. Uno's your game? Yeah. Boy raised from the cutoff to fifty-three thousand. I have to call in uh, on the button. And Peralin comes along with the big boy. No, he still got got a decision. Okay. Lost his glasses for this hand. Yep. Psychiatrist or psychologist? Yeah, I'm um, not sure about that. Okay. That's kind of a big difference. <laughs> not <Yeah>. in my book. <laughs> Let's just say he picks picks people brains. Uh, I guess, yeah, something like that. I, I'm not really really even sure. Is it like the psychologist you have to have like a medical degree, and the psychiatrist you don't need a medical degree? Is that? No, well, there's different. No, the psychiatrist, I generally think, has the medical degree. Okay, the other way yeah. around. Psychologist is all different. Like, my father was an industrial psychologist. Oh. And it had nothing that, you know, he's, he's had to do with statistics and uh, personnel. So he did not have a medical degree. And he was not a doctor. He's barely a father to me. I don't want to get into this right <laughs> now. But uh, that's that. So, King 7-7 seven, seven on the flop. Going first to act. Checks. So Pradin folded the big blind. They both check. And six of hearts on the turn. Once again, both check quickly. Nine of diamonds. No checks. And the friend who checked behind. And we see ace was four, ace five. Ace five, and that's going to take it down. That's good. <gasps> we, we played a lot of Uno when I was in my 20s. Was, for some reason, in the winter. I don't know. We like to drink playing Uno. <laughs> and once uh, it was near Christmas, and uh, we were playing three or four, four-handed, and uh, we were playing with a couple, two of my best friends, and they got into a massive argument. Uh, she thought that he was intentionally giving her the draw two card a lot, and he was. <laughs> and they broke up that night. Now, as it turns out, they got back together, but they broke up again for good, like six months later. And it's it, and Uno maybe be, they always say if your relationship's having any problems, it's hard to get by the holidays. If you have any problems in your relationship, somehow Christmas or New Year's is gonna exacerbate the problems. Uno is like that as well. Because this couple <laughs> had problems, and that draw two card actually broke them up quicker than they would have broken up otherwise. So, uh, off Blue Rickson. I mean, uh, looked so intimidating, but actually, yeah, I think you're right, Norman. It turns out to be uh, a pretty nice guy, I think. Mm -hmm. Seems the way he's been acting at the table is very friendly. So, boy races from the hijack. Seventy thousand. Oh, that's uh, kind of big. It's more than well. It's close to three X. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Go to 3x and um, takes it down. down. Interestingly enough, Ivan, that was in the big blind uh, this hand, his last name actually translates into payday. Oh, yeah. So he's a Norwegian moneymaker. Yeah, let's, have, let's hope he has a big one. Oh, oh big payday. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 kind of short stack at the moment, so he needs to go to work. Still. To earn his payday. Have you ever had a payday candy bar? No. Candy Never. bar? Yeah. It's like a Snickers yeah, yeah. type of chocolate thing. It's called payday. Oh, payday. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, don't know if they course, sell, yeah. sell them. Uh, of course, is that of course? Yeah. I've never no, had a payday. I'm older you, than you, and I've never had a payday. Well, I've never seen a payday. If you go to the US, you have to try some, you know, local 
delicacies and payday is one of them. I would call it a local delicacy, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> you could, uh, you know, sort of Reese's peanut butter cups are by far the biggest candy seller in the world, which I didn't know. And really? so, uh, oh. I think it's Butterfingers has decided to take on the Reese's empire, and they're creating a Butterfingers peanut butter cup, which was just introduced uh, through ads during the Super Bowl, of the American Super Bowl. And there's just so much money to be made in the candy bar area. But Reese's is, I didn't know, I love Reese's. I didn't realize it was by far the number one seller. Yeah, actually, uh, just got those in the Norwegian stores, so normally put here, oh, okay, no. All your counts out at three bit, but it's decisive for. So actually, those I've tasted, and it's not my. It's not your cup of tea. Not my buttercup. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but apparently it's somehow culinary genius to combine peanut butter and chocolate. I like it. I don't know why it's genius, but everyone loves it. But yes, peanut butter and chocolate together apparently works. Now, what you wouldn't know worked at one of the most famous uh, restaurants in Los Angeles is Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. And that happened by accident with Roscoe or whoever his family was many, many years ago. They had leftovers in the morning. They had some chicken. They had some waffles. They put them together. They liked the chicken and waffles together. And that chicken and waffles dish, it's a tremendous dish. They, they, it's a great piece of fried chicken they give you. It's, it's one of the best waffles I've ever tasted. Uh, so if you ever get that chance to have chicken and waffles together at a good chicken and waffles place, well, actually, uh, you should be familiar with the uh, yeah. with the hot dogs and waffles. That's sort of the Norwegian equivalent to that dish. I would. Oh, you mentioned say. the other day. Well, because yeah. you mentioned the Ace Queen is the waffle known hand. as the waffle hand. But at sporting events in Norway, especially where the part of Norway. Well, not where in, I not come. in Norway. It's just no. Where just I come the part from. Where you come from? Uh, we, they serve hot dogs and waffles. Are we having all in instead here together? Of, yeah, instead okay. of like a bun. I've this all in for his. Uh, Last 267,000. After I have to raise from Alphagon plus one. And I know Seeking Bear Folds, yeah, that's right. Back to Athlete. Quick call. Let's go, payday. No. Oh. <laughs> Lord. 9-7, that's not the hand you want to see. Uh -huh. Well, suited. It's, again, it can, it's the type of hand that can crack pocket aces yeah, and pocket exactly, kings. Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, they're suited connectors, so he's got a chance. Flop comes, 8-6-4. Oh. Open-ended straight drop. Three. Save. Nope. And it's Jack, so... Payday doubles yeah. through. Or uh, I've been learning, as he's known in uh, Norwegian. Doubles up. And it's, uh, well, he started the day with, uh, I think, uh, around 600,000. Now he's back up to uh, more than, I would think, more than uh, 400,000. And, uh, well, Another small blow to uh, at the stack. Still playing last month with 2.2 million. Oh, I've been up to well nearly what he started today with 25 big blinds now. That call might look strange to people, but uh, up last, uh, so so many chips, and the the race was not that significant to his stack. So uh, so we pretty much call anything you race with. But still... Yeah, it's always nice to give a courtesy double up to a number member of the uh, local community. Always yeah. nice, but... Told you. I can be nice very guy. dangerous. Hold it around to... Uh, or get on on the button. Races. 
50,000. Stig André med en small blind. He folds. And he's in Norman Chad Holdem. Do either of you remember after the two card flop what comes after the turn? The peekaboo. Peekaboo. The peekaboo. Now, can you take that back uh, to the rest of the world and see if the two card flop instead of the three card flop and then the one card turn, the one card peekaboo, and the one card river can catch on? Yeah, we'll try. Yeah, I'll not just say there's a little more conviction, such as patronizing. Yeah, we'll try, you old man. You know, like the two gold trouters, me and Andreas are. We will try. You are very best, Norman. We promise. I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know if you are old enough to remember, and uh, I don't know if you are too old to remember. But a song by Susie and the Banshees called Peekaboo. Oh, I don't know that song. No, it's kind of a psychedelic, uh, but still, it's I, I like it. It's from the 80s. But I'm kind of I'm 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 kind of like I have like I'm kind of like an 80s music savant. That's where my strength is. I mean. At uh, pop quizzes, I you know I simply crush and destroy. Wow, you everyone. know I should have you at my home game, which we play at the most once a month with people from the card room. I have them come over when I'm in town in Los Angeles. When we pick the music station to take off of satellite TV, I play 1980s more than anything else. Yeah. We play 1980s. We play classic R&B, or we play I like singers and standards. I like Tony Bennett, Ella Fitzgerald. But they prefer the 1980s. So yeah. you should, I should invite you and pleasure. Oh. Sure, you're easy money. Happy to, <laughs> I'd be happy to come and donate and uh, listen to good music. I mean, they don't make music kind of like that anymore. So, no, like right now the music scene is like a lot about what these artists are doing in the club, and I just I, the lyrics are so bad. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Wow. Yeah. And uh, up look. Take that one down. Yeah, well, believe me, there were plenty of bad lyrics in the 80s as well. But I mean, I, I, I just personally, I mean, that's my opinion. But still, I, personally, I think the music was that much better than what, well, most of what is released, in, released these days. So, um, but I am old fashioned. Well, I'll surprise you. The, my second wedding reception, I had Dark Throne play for me. Uh, they played live. <laughs> And the third wedding reception, uh, Emperor. Uh -huh. They were hard to get. They were they were booked pretty heavily that time of year. But I, I knew the lead singer. Oh. Are you? I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm not really sure if you are serious or if you are <laughs> making joke. Norman, I. Yeah, I can keep you off balance with that. No, uh, I, if Dark Throne walked in here, I wouldn't know if it were uh, <laughs> a ghost. I have no idea who Dark Throne or Emperor are. I believe. Uh, they play kind of heavy music. I'm not really sure of the term, but it's something like dark metal or black metal or something. Heavy like metal, that. black metal? Yeah, somewhere around yeah, that. Yeah. But there's so many genres. Oh, we have an all in now. Finally. Okay, Dan Shabari gets all in. From under the gun, so he has a lot of players to get through. Well, we'll get on. Looks interested. A and call. Just a call. From the hijack, which means he has another four players to behind him. Boy, Steve Andre looks like he doesn't want to give up that quickly. Looks like he, he wants to smoke. Yeah, somebody get him a lighter. <laughs> no. Well, he's, he's adopting the Sammy Farha look from 2003, who had the unlit cigarette for most of the main event, his Humphrey Bogart uh, pose. <laughs> Well, Daniel uh, folds in the big blind, so all ace queen for Olga, and ace four suited for uh, Pedan, so he's dominated. So he needs uh, four uh, diamonds or some kind of draw. Well, yeah. 
One diamond. There's a six, yeah. so... <laughs> and that means we are going to lose the... Well, psychiatrist, psychologist, Peter Arden Schöberg. Well, he still gets a good payday, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised still to see him up his hourly rate in the next year. More than 4,500 euros for Peter uh, we are closing in on the dinner break in approximately 10 minutes. We are going to have a one hour dinner break. Still a long way to go until we are down to uh, final table here in the Norwegian Championship of Poker 2014. We are going to play down to that final table tonight. So it will probably be a long day for us here in the commentary booth as well. That's always fun. I mean, I, I love to do this. Story. I mean, watch good poker players play poker. And I mean, it beats working. And I, you know, I just told people how lucky I am to, to be able to sit and, and watch the best poker in the world, and also to try to be entertaining about it. And it's just, it's just a, a, a great place to be. Oh, and here comes uh, Stig Andre. He's all in. 124,000. Quick fall from Roy and Natalie to Daniel on the button. No, I think that's uh, Atlee was on the button, yeah, so uh, Daniel's in small blind. Yeah, so Atlee has decided to call or not. He's, the decision is on Atlee, okay, yeah. My mistake, again. My goal is to have you afraid of your own shadow by the end of the week. <laughs> then I'll give you a psychiatrist you can go see. You know him already. And at the calls. So Stieg Andre will be at risk. Daniel falls the small blind. And uh, Ivan falls the big blind. So the showdown. Pocket nines for uh, Stieg Andre. Pocket fours for Atlee. So he's good, in good shape to double up. But you should never do that. No. Never celebrate before the flop. And there's the four. You know of where you speak. Only and wow. And he is out of the tournament. That's insta karma for you. Very unlucky uh, there, Stig Andre. Of course, he yeah. was in a very good position to double up and uh, he would have had a little room to play, a little more room to maneuver, but insta instead it's the chip leader at the table he takes down another good one. That's the second time he's knocked out somebody where he had the, the dominated pocket pair. He knocked off uh, Freetoff, who had the pocket aces, yeah. Whitley had uh, pocket kings, and now his pocket fours take down Sieg Andre's pocket nines. Yeah, it happens. Why is that though, that you shouldn't celebrate before the five cards are out? Oh, you are just jinxing yourself. That's yeah. faith, kismet, call it what you like. It's just... Uh, you don't have a scientific explanation for that, of course, but... So many times that happens, you yeah. get, you know, sucked out. Yep. So don't do that, kids. Wait for the five cards. I'll then to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. I'll flip back up to 2.6 million. It was at one point above 3 million chips. Huh? And you see also Olga has uh, chipped up. He's now playing 1.1. We are down to approximately 43 players with uh, Stig Andre's exit. There's a bad trend in American football where players, before they get into the end zone for a touchdown, they start to celebrate like at the 10 or 15 yard line, which makes no sense. And there have been two or three incidents the last couple of years where they have dropped the football because they're, you know, they're, they're, they're holding it up high and they're, they're acknowledging the crowd before they get to the end zone. Or they've been caught from behind because they didn't know somebody was coming to tackle them. 
So in all sports and games, it really makes sense to wait until it's over before you celebrate. And then I don't even like the way they celebrate at that point. Then it becomes like a whole Cirque du Soleil act uh, in the end zone of uh, American football stadiums. But always wait till it's over. So that's where the expression drop the ball comes from. I just understood that. Well, that is one of the places it would come from. <laughs> They're uh, holding. Uh, we only have five players at our feature table, so uh, yep, waiting for some balance. And it's uh, always important to balance the table, so uh, someone doesn't have an unfair advantage. I mean, some players like to play shorthanded, but still at this point in the tournament, all the tables have to be as equal as possible. And uh, it's very important that we have the approximately the same number of players at every table. But while we're waiting, I, I, you know, I was first contacted after Thor Hansen gave my name to somebody to have me come over here. Uh, I was contacted by a guy who I think takes should take a lot of the credit for the growth of this uh, guy you well know. Uh, Frodo Fogelie. Yeah. I mean, the, the growth of this from 89 players in 2002 to 1,263 now, and he's one of the three members of the Norwegian Poker Hall of Fame, along with Annette Overstad and, and Thor Hansen. But Frodo is the backbone of this event in so many ways, as you all know. Uh, it's amazing to go from 89 then. It's grown every year. There's just one year it went down a little, and then it went up sharply the next year. So the, to keep growing over a 14-year period to the 1,263 now, or as I said earlier, one of every 4,000 people who live in Norway play in this event is to his credit. Absolutely. And, uh, and plus he's a terrific player. You know, he's one of the, the best players in Norwegian championship history. This year he, he had a second in the horse. I think he had a fourth in the PLL. But I was looking at his results outside of the Norwegian championship. You know, he, he, and when he travels elsewhere, <laughs> Not as good now. He had one year. He, had, he was a one-year wonder in 2006. Let me look at where I have it. In, in 2006, he won the Betson uh, Poker Cruise High Roller. 22 entries, $6,300 entry. So he won that Poker Cruise High Roller. Later that year at the World Series of Poker in Las Vegas, in a, an event with uh, 2,800 people, he finished 54th in No Limit Hold'em. But best I can tell then, he's only good on a ship and in the desert. Elsewhere, Frode is a fish. <laughs> So we have a new player. This is Celia Nielsen. She was actually uh, one of the shortest stack at the start of the day, but she's still alive. She played, I think, approximately 100,000 stack when uh, they sat down uh, nearly four hours ago. But now, well, she's a bit up from that, but still, still not much. She's managed to, uh, to climb the pay ladder at least, and uh, she still got a chance. Yeah, I'd say they suffered some uh, penalties late last night. Um, not, yeah, not gonna elaborate. Just, why. just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. No, she was, she was. I mean, obviously very tired. You know, I mean, from playing poker for so many hours, so many days, and, and that's understandable. So, but still, she's alive and she's. Uh, I mean, she's guaranteed the top. 45 finish in the Norwegian main event, and she, she might go all the way. I've seen it happen before. <laughs> but not in the Norwegian championship, though, and uh, still, Stine Maria brings me, the only woman ever to have made the final table in the main event of the Norwegian championship. But we might, we might even get more today, or not today, but this year. Final table plays out tomorrow. Yeah, do you have any, any information on how many women are still in? No, not still in. I know there were five when we started the day. At least one. Except for my bad back, I would go up and out and look at the remaining four or five tables out there to check. Both of you are a little younger than me, did not have the bad back. Oh, see you later, Andres. Yeah, 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 maybe yeah. we can check to see how many women are left. It's always the youngest I'm one. hoping at least three. Yeah. It's always, I mean, of course, we both agree with this, but today we are going to send Andreas out on a few months, yeah, right? We just sent him out just now. Was he raised outdoors? Because he has some very quirky uh, verbal habits, and uh, I didn't want to... You know, I didn't want to talk in front of him. I don't mind talking behind his back. He might have been raised outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> 
So uh, Sabin leads into the table. I do believe, well, the players were getting up, but the clock was um, stopped, so that's probably why. Just a few minutes left of this level. After this level, we are going to go on a dinner break. So um, just have to wait and see how many hands we can uh, get in here. Just a short delay. I believe the clock was stopped during the delay while we were moving up to the player because I think we should have been on break right now if it weren't. Yeah, they were moving uh, one table up to the uh, featured table. So we'll have a new table after the break. There are a total of three, three female, women. female players, Kaya and um, or Caroline. Ka Caroline. And uh, Turin. And Turin. Still in. Caroline. Okay, I should have asked you this actually before I sent you out, Andreas. Can you tell the difference between a man and a woman? Um, yeah, it's kind of hard these days, but uh, <laughs> I, I try to picture them naked, and then I go, <laughs> I go from there. Oh, okay. so it's backwards. Yeah. Okay, but so anyway, I'm happy to know that we do have at least, we do have three left uh, with the field uh, right around 40 or 45. Okay. Yeah. So, well, I just got message. We are not going to go into the break quite yet. We are going to go on a 15-minute break, and that means somebody is going to lose their job. But still, we are... Soon on a 15 minute break, and after that break, we are gonna get a new TV or feature table uh, for Sylvia. She just got some TV time in, but she didn't get to play a hand. So we are on a 15 minute break. We will be right back here for the Norwegian Championship of Poker 2014. <laughs>
allowed to have a... Oh, not on the rail. No, no, the kids watch the rail on the next day. Oh, yeah, you definitely can't watch the live stream. Yeah. And we are back from the Norwegian Championship of Poker 2014. The main event is now down to 40 players. So it means they're playing at uh, five tables right now. And we have a new featured table. And some pretty interesting end names uh, on this table. We are going to go back to that. But first, I'm going to welcome back Norman Chad and Andreas uh, Barge. Thank you. You are most welcome. He thanked you for both of us. <laughs> yes, we're basically the same person, but um, yeah. <laughs> okay. We have a synchronized thing going here. And one of the interesting players that you were talking about is this guy, Petr yeah. Also known as PSB. He races from under the gun, plus one. Holding around to the small blind. Who is uh, Joachim Sommer? No, that's. F oh, yeah, he folds to uh, Frode Andersen in the big blind. And Frode Andersen has a lot of those beautiful pink chips you were talking about, Andreas. Yeah, they're worth a uh, hundred thousand each. Filled up, playing a stack of nearly four million. And that would uh, lead me to suspect that he's the chip leader in the tournament right now. And he falls the big blind, so uh, Peter Solibari takes down the first one at this uh, featured table. We are now playing 15,000, 30,000 with a 4,000 anti. Peter Solibari made the final table the Norwegian Championship main event back in 2011 and then Jan on So he's he's had deep runs before Mr. Barig or as you would say it Norman Berg. Uh, that's, that's exactly what I would say. As you mentioned we're down to 40 players the average chip stack now just under a million. And one of those players playing a uh, chip stack of uh, about a million is well not the uh, well, in seat eight, Stian Sharvan in the blue hoodie, he has uh, one of those stacks with more than a million. We're going to see what happens here. 
from under the gun this time. It looks like uh, Petrus decided to play aggressively. Petro asked me in the break if he could uh, watch the live stream as he was uh, playing the feature table. Uh, looks like his iPad has been confiscated or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the reason for that is probably that he, uh, I mean, we of course do expert commentary here with analysis and I think Petro has a lot to learn from us three, so that's probably why. Uh, or maybe not. I'm glad though he, you know, he was one of the few criminals who was announcing the crime he wanted to commit. <laughs> and so they stopped the crime from being committed. Oh, we have a three bet this time from uh, Frude. He's not going to put up with uh, Petr's antics. And, uh, big three bet from uh, Frude. 200,000. He has to stack to do it. with the decision. And uh, this looks like a fold to me. And he folds. Good eye. So I remember back in 2011, I mean, uh, Petra on that final table was all in, in a couple of occasions and every time he uh, ran down to his friends at the rail and in the, that was in Riga and uh, in Latvia and uh, we had the, the final table up on a stage so every time he would just run down from the stage and down to his friends on the rail to watch because they were streaming on the screens as well where they were standing so he would just stand there and uh, watch with his friends until uh, so the floor manager came and politely asked him to go and sit back at the table. He's a dedicated TV viewer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wanted to watch the stream um, at the table. So, but, but Petra has actually been watching the live stream as he was playing on the other tables. So, uh, so yeah, he just wanted to continue. Oh, oh he has. Yeah, oh, he has. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, well, it's good for us then. After the day was done uh, yesterday, he came came in the booth and said. Great job, guys. <laughs> and I was like, hey, you have been, you've been playing. <laughs> yeah, but I also have been watching. <laughs> wow. That's good to know. Oh, uh, well, we should mention there's uh, a few uh, other interesting players at the ta this table, especially in seat one. We have uh, Caroline Falsius, or Caroline, as you would say in Norman. Uh, you've taught me to go with Caroline. Oh, good. Oh, wow. I'm impressed. That's really nice. Well, I might be returning to Norway instead of the U.S. after this because of some comments I've made about America that <laughs> Americans don't <laughs> like. So I might have no choice. Yeah, remember, they're watching you. <laughs> Kavalin Kosius who won the ladies' event here at the Norwegian Championship. She's playing a stack of uh, 1.1 million. It's quite a week for her to, to win the ladies' event. And a few days later, she's closing in on maybe making the main event final table here for the championship. Joachim has a uh, race from the cutoff. Didn't quite hear what the deal was saying here, but... I think Petr inquired how much uh, Joachim oh. has behind. Okay. Better three, but here. Yep. It's and a quick fold. That was a quick fold. Like that from uh, Joachim Sommer. Should also mention in sweet, uh, C2 we have uh, Svein uh, Mienna. He's playing a stack of uh, approximately 500,000. Guy with the red cap. 
on the left, just behind the dealer said. In seat five, we have uh, Jarle Trostal. And he's playing a stack of, uh, well, approximately a million. And, uh, and we also have uh, in seat uh, seven, Daniel Romero Hermestad. Uh -huh. You know him quite well, don't you, Andreas? Yeah, seasoned online pro. Uh, played a lot of poker. Uh, I've also played a lot of live poker, but preferably cash games. Known as the icebreaker. Oh, is that uh, you're allowed to out him? Oh yeah, it's been <laughs> outed in national <laughs> media, ish. <laughs> Some of the online players, they uh, prefer to be anonymous. Yeah, I don't think that account is live anymore. No, That's no. why it's okay. Yeah. So here we go. Caroline races um, with gun plus one. 70,000 for the ground to uh, Petter in the small blind. Did Jarl lead the tournament from day two? Or? Um, I am not really sure. Yeah, I think he did. You are absolutely right. He, uh, he did. He started the day with uh, 1.1 uh, 1 million and he was the chip leader. Coming into this day three, and uh, well, he's playing approximately the same stack, so uh, at least he hasn't lost anything. But uh, we've lost a lot of players, so now that's an average stack. That is correct. Again, stating the obvious—that's what I do. <laughs> you do it very well, Andreas. 15 and 30,000. That's a, that's the a start stack in the big line right there. And again, stating the obvious. Well, it's glad, you're, as you said, you're captain obvious now. When you were. Yeah, I might be lieutenant. Lieutenant but. obvious, it was kind of embarrassing. You, you didn't do as well in the singles bars, but captain obvious makes a difference. How many New York Yankee caps am I going to see at this, this event? This is the third in a third different color. Would it kill somebody to wear a Cleveland Indians hat or a Minnesota Twins hat? I love New York, but the Yankees, no. Do they sell them on every street corner? Why am I seeing so many New York hats? I don't know. They're popular in Norway for some reason. For some, I, I'm actually guilty of owning a New York Yankee hat. Whoa. Okay, now okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why. Okay, the earring, Whoa. as you know, that's strike one. <laughs> the New York hat is now strike two, and I'm sure you have more than strike three <laughs> on you right now. Uh, if you only knew, Norman, if you only knew. Well, I don't have it with me, but uh, I have it somewhere in the closet. Where it should stay. Yeah, yeah, it's going to stay there at least now after meeting Norman Chad and uh, hearing his opinions about it. <coughs> That's only your opinion, Norman. I mean, New York Yankees, they have a lot of supporters, oh, don't they? Yes, they do. Oh, yes, they do. And of course, be because of their success over the years, as with any successful sports franchise, you know, Manchester United, oh, Notre Dame in the U.S., uh, people just, more people hate you <laughs> than if you have no success. Yeah. So the Yankees, with so many championships, Plus, being from the biggest city as well, that's another thing. People hate New York. I love New York. Uh, I always say I love New York. I hate the sports. I hate the sports teams, and I just and I say hate in just a, not a real way. It's just the sports hate. So you've picked up on that everybody hates United. That's pretty good because well, everybody does. Yeah, they should. Yeah. Uh, you, you are not allowed to go into you know this debate, Andreas, as a Liverpool supporter. You, I mean, I don't. I don't. Just, just don't. He looks like he is he is poised to, to jump on it though. It's it's a it's a sticky topic for him. You yeah. know the, the final table is going to you running tomorrow, and I mean we've had a camera on us uh, these past few days. And Andreas told me, oh, at the final table, I'm going to sit in a Liverpool jersey, and I just said, no, no way, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Yeah, so I'll wear the second prettiest piece of clothing I have with me, my suit. And that I like because that's that's really nice. 
And you'll wear your suit tomorrow with a different shirt than you have on today. Yes. Thank you. And a tie. <laughs> I promise. Oh, well, I don't even own a tie, so don't expect that from me. We don't expect much from you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's we a, have become the same person. <laughs> he's a fast learner. It's, it's bad news for him, though. No, it's bad news for me. <laughs> uh, he's young and impressionable. Is that the correct word? Impressionable? You used yep. it e exactly correctly. Hard to know sometimes. Okay, it's a uh, little distract. Big chip leader. Bases from under the gun, plus one. Donna Foltz, Petra Foltz, to uh, Daniel Romero, Romero, Harmon Foltz, Dion Scherven, on the button. Daniel is a very capable player, but he's obviously short stacked. Uh, around 10 big blinds or something like that. Harunin in the small blind, she looks interested. Yeah, she's such a capable player. We watched her at the final table of the ladies event and uh, I mean, she played very well. And the worthy opponent as well heads up, Katja Svensson. And she calls. Swine is all in. Oh. Yeah, I think he announced it. Yeah, 479,000. Back to uh, Fulba, the original racer. That's racer, as in racer, not racer. Well, the real razor has got to believe the all-in has a hand, because he was looking at a raise and a call in front of him. And, uh, see if uh, Frodo raised light or if he was legitimate. And he still has to worry about uh, Karolin. Called him. She's left to act. She plays 1.2 million and can put a, a good dent in his big stack and decides to fold. So <laughs> well, it's friendly, and I mean, Svein, he looks, he looks relaxed, maybe too relaxed. Yeah, he's relaxed, she's concerned, this is for a decent chunk of her remaining sack, about one third of her chips. She started this hand with 40 big blinds. This is a good spot for Svein to make a squeeze play. But uh, Karolin knows that, and he, she knows that Svein knows, and there you have the, your meta game, I guess. Yeah, that's a, you know, there's one thing to do the squeeze play. There's another thing to go all in with the squeeze play, which is you know quite a gutsy move if you don't have the goods. I can never pull the trigger on that. I'm assuming he has a hand. Still, he was in the big blind, and he knows that. Um, well, probably. Uh, excuse me. He knows what? What were you going to say? I'm just going to cut you off. What were you going to say about oh, the big oh, blind? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, 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 well, he knows that probably <laughs> through, through the. He's capable of, uh, of making a lot of plays, even though he raced from under the gun. It doesn't necessarily mean he has to have a big hand. So, uh, and uh, Caroline, she folds. So. Uh, gets through 
And uh, when I, th I, I mean, he probably played with uh, Fulda for a while now, and it's kind of a, a weed on him, and uh, could be some history there. And uh, when Caroline just calls uh, Fulda's race, then I think he's kind of thinking, well, if I can get through Fulda, then mm -hmm. I'll probably get through Caroline as well. That was a nice pickup of chips for him there, pre flop, uncontested. Absolutely. Into the feature table with uh, a little less than 500,000. Quite young, but still, as you can see uh, from this angle, it's probably going to go bald sooner or later, Norman. <laughs> it's you know the old thing in uh, life is uh, what are the three givens in life? Uh, death, taxes, and I guess growing bald, <laughs> inevitably. <laughs> well, I think. Uh, Andreas to our left here. I think he's he's in pretty good shape so far. Yeah, but I have some bad genes. Oh, you do. My father is pretty bald. <laughs> okay, but I don't think it's, they say it skips uh, generation, don't they? Yeah, I um, again, I'm not uh, an expert in biology. <laughs> but you are in history, though. Here comes uh, Daniel, goes all in, 205,000. It's a quick uh, fold from Stian. Caroline on the button, she folds. That's why it folds, the small blind. To uh, Joachim with the big blind. Daniel needs to keep doing that to accumulate chips. Hopefully, get a double up and then it's back in play. So, no shuffle machine over here yet, huh? No, it's oh, become no. quite oh, popular. No. Yeah, but still, I don't think they could have done it at this uh, feature table anyway because there's still a lot of tables out there. So, but uh, it would be possible at a at a, feet, a final table. At a final table. Uh, you know, it's amazing when the when the the, sh the shuffle machine, which is replaced, obviously the dealer having to shuffle in many <laughs> U.S. card rooms. I would have thought that would have reduced again the complaints about the dealer, you know, I can't win with this dealer, it's a dealer's fault, which is ridiculous to begin with, but <laughs> even though the dealer's no longer shuffling, oh, well, the dealer cuts. He cuts the, he cuts the cards. They still complain about the dealer when they lose hands. And I mean, every time I see that, I, I, I mean, okay, I'm not very intelligent, as you both know, but still, whenever I see somebody get angry at the dealer, I think automatically that person cannot be very intelligent. So there you go. Hey, Norman, I think we ruined Stegi's confidence is shot. Yeah, he's just his self-esteem <laughs> yeah. at a record low. We have to build him up again. <laughs> I, I feel bad now. <laughs> no, but the, the shuffling machines, they are, I, I think they're annoying, the sound they make. Oh, they are annoying, and actually sometimes they mark up the cards uh, tremendously. You know, you have to keep getting a new deck because they keep coming across with a, a line across the, the backs of the cards. So... I knew we were in trouble. I used to play blackjack a lot, and when the, and I would I'm a, I was a, a card counter, even though it didn't help me much. But when I we went to the, the the shuffle machines in Las Vegas for a lot of them, were just ooh, just a constant shuffle. You you don't get to count the cards anymore. But it even seems more unfair that constant shuffle of the cards that they pull the the cards out of for the blackjack hands. Looks like. Uh Jarle is going to be moved from this uh, feature table. Yeah, I didn't like him much. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I usually don't 
talk about this, but I sent a memo out, and uh, we will get him off the TV table. If he makes the main event, uh, he will be covered in a sack. So I do not have to look at him any longer. We wish him luck. Well, I was going to say he's being moved to balance the table. Oh, balance, balance. I sent out the memo. Balance the tables. Hold it around to uh, the big stack at the table, possibly the chip leader in the tournament. Just did a little ball mission in the small blind. So we now has, uh, well, Petr Sulevari in the big blind. It just limps in. See what Petr does. I think that's kind of like waving a red flag at Petr. But they have some history. I checks. I talked to Petr just um, on during the break before they sat down at the feature table. And they clashed. So the flop is King Ace with uh, two clubs. First act. Those yellow chips. Twin five thousand. He overbets the pot here. One hundred and seventy-five thousand. Twice the size of the pot. <laughs> Quite an overbet, an, an unusual bet on that flop. That is a peculiar bet. Probably knows that Petter doesn't have an ace. Yeah, and he probably knows that he holds an ace. I mean, but Petter knows that Frodo knows, and, yeah. uh, and there you go. Is he limped ace king? <laughs> That's possible. A small blind? It's possible, but <laughs> uh, the bet makes it more unlikely. Yeah, doesn't think. that bet just polarize the hand? It's either a monster or it's nothing? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I mean, the only thing he achieves by doing that against a good player like Petri is, uh, you know, it's either. But Petr obviously wouldn't have a monster in this spot, but still, the only thing he achieves doing this is Petr's got a pull. Yeah, or he's going to go all in. Yeah, and if he goes all in, I mean, he's going to have the goods. Petr's not going to risk his turn of life on, you know, trying to bluff him when he does something like that. I mean... No, that's a bad spot for Petr to bluff. Yeah, um, Petr's going to choose his spots, I mean, believe me. And it's never good to go broke in a limp pot. Sound advice. Have you thought about this, Andreas? That many of the terms we we use, you know, in the poker language, or many of the expressions and stuff. Some of them, I'm sure, that Norman Chad has come up with. No. <laughs> sure you. <laughs> you come up with Heidi Ho no. and Peekaboo. Yeah, Peekaboo and like ex-wives and kids with dreams. You have any more, Norman? <laughs> oh, did it? Yeah, well, if I could right now, with one fell swoop, I would wamboozle both of you. Oh, oh there, there, there we go. So, uh, I waited for that, that all week. Yeah. You waited all week? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. All in. Oh. Well, Petrus all in. After uh, Svein raced in the hijack, Daniel, the big blind, lets it go. Back to uh, Svein. So, uh, Svein would be the all in player, but he folds.
That was a strong move. Yeah, Petra is capable of doing that move with a very wide range of hands. So, we've been here for a few days now, uh, Mr. Norman Chad, and you've seen a lot of poker before. So, uh, well, there has obviously been a lot of um, different kind of plays, but like an overall impression on the quality of play uh, at this Norwegian Championship from what we've seen from this uh, feature table so far. Well, again, I'm not as much poker as I've seen, and I'm, I'm just not trying to be self-effacing here. I'm not the best person to answer that question because of my <laughs> no, own no, no. Hold'em experience and my own Hold'em skills. Uh, the, the quality of play, as I actually expected, is, is largely in line with the quality of play I, I see just about everywhere. Uh, I haven't been surprised by anything. Uh, I, I did see when I wandered around, and I was told this was going to happen a lot, the, 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 the four and five betting pre-flop, uh, which is a little more than I see elsewhere. But besides that, uh, there hasn't been that many differences. And I, you know, we talked about this the other day. I still, I still claim that people in poker tend to stereotype other people in poker based on their, where they're from, what part of the world, and that's not a good thing to do. And there's just a million different ways to play, and I've seen all the different ways to play here, as I see them everywhere. So I haven't seen that stereotype uh, validated when I've walked around the room. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Uh, what was the? Uh, Expression from uh, Phil Helm, you idiot from Northern Europe, kind of play. <laughs> yeah, see, I, uh, I, th I, I thought that was hysterical, but he got a lot of flack for that uh, remark. It's amazing off the top of his head the things he will say, like that idiot from Northern Europe, that just resonates. It, it, it's again, it's just off the top of his head. It's not scripted, it's with just spontaneous combustion, you know? And that's one of his four or five uh, most famous uh, eruptions. I loved it. I, I burst out laughing when he said that. Of course, it wasn't nice to the player who said it too. But I mean, in general, as a <laughs> as a northern 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 Europe kind of citizen, I thought it was hilarious. Oh, we have an all in. Smiling all in. Yep. Daniel's Daniel is all in. Has to get through uh, Steel and small blind first. Oh, well, he wants to count. And still, Caroline Fosius in the big blind. Left to act after uh, Steon decides. Steon calls. I believe calls the big blind. So we have a showdown. So our queen. Pocket eights for no sixes for Siam, Queen Jack for Daniel. So hey, it's a coin flip, and they're suited. Yes, that's always beautiful. Queen in the drawer, and so Daniel is ahead. Does not want to see a six, and he uh, doubles up. You see, <laughs> once I got it right, the cards of the players. I didn't switch this time. Practice makes perfect. And that should boost your confidence. <laughs> oh, believe me. So, uh, Daniel Romero had him stop. He doubles up. So, then, uh, close to 500,000. And uh, the newly crowned latest event champion. Cautious. It's looking pretty relaxed and happy. Well, after you win an event like that, 
besides the money, do you feel like you're on a free roll in your next event? And it comes a couple days later, and this is a huge event. So I, I think it, things go in, in streaks often in poker, and I'm not surprised that she's acquitted herself so well here in the main event after winning the ladies event. We've seen that a lot. I mean, especially kind of what I noticed uh, in the, the November Niners. Uh, I mean, with the World Series of Poker Europe, they often, uh, you know, reach the final table of, uh, of the World Series of Poker main event and then gone on to play in the World Series of Poker Europe. And uh, a lot of them has reached the final table. Uh, and yeah, just, the, the I results. mean, just making the November 9 final table or winning a bracelet, it, it boosts your confidence. And, and what actually happens sometimes, it, it, it makes you play better poker. It's like you you become a better poker player after you win. It's it's a weird phenomena, but more people are watching you, uh, and you sometimes improve your game after you win. You become a better poker player after you win, and we see it time and again. Excellent, folded around to uh, Daniel, and he uh, folds after the hand, which doubled him up. Yeah, folds the button to Caroline in the small blind. She, she's probably going to put a lot of pressure on uh, on the swine in these uh, situations. And she raises. Quick call in. So once again, he's to add it. And this time for her to call this all in is going to cost her even a higher percentage of her stack than just a few moments ago. Oh, she calls. I so like Svein is the all in player. Svein, he smiles. Was it Jax for Caroline? A7 for Swine? Jax for Caroline. So Swine. 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 <laughs> swine. He needs an ace. A couple of sevens. Okay. Four or five. Ah, uh, well, yeah. He's got the straight draw now as well. Ace for a five. A seven. Ace five or seven. Oh, oh but the uh, ten of diamonds on the river and. We lose Svein uh, Myanmar. It's a big pot for Caroline. Now she's going to be dangerous. Oh, yes, she is. Up to uh, almost 1.7. Well, again, pretty standard play from both, uh, both players. Second biggest stack at this feature table. She can do some damage to uh, Phil Dalmatian's stack now. Some real damage. She uh, doubles up against Phil Dalmatian. She's the chick leader. But the uh, baseball cap, is that burlap? Uh, material. It's a. It seems a thicker material than most baseball caps I see. Not the brim of the cap, but the the gray. Uh, or it might be a shag rug. It, it seems to be a different material than you usually see on a baseball cap. Andreas, you are the fashion expert. <laughs> I thought he was going to say I'm not an expert in whatever the category is, and then give me an answer. Well, yeah, fashion is. N no, no, I, I can't do fashion. <laughs> Obviously. But ask him uh, something about history. He's your man. Yeah, he was citing the other day. He was like citing mortality statistics from early 11th century. Yeah. It only, was shocking. If only he applied. Probably could use that knowledge for something. Yeah, uh, if you applied yourself to poker as much as you do to history, you would be sitting at this table, Andreas. Well, we had a discussion last night uh, about something in life is actually more important than poker. 
Oh. Some things are. Late last night? Late, na late last night. And we also made a bet on who is going to win this main event. And okay. my horse is petted. Oh, really? So I'm, I'm not biased, but kind, kind of rooting oh, for you. You have a little vested little interest. Really, you're not biased. <laughs> It's such a small bet. I don't care about those five euros. Yeah, well, uh... Well, you made a bet. Well, who, who is there? Uh, there's not, isn't there another horse for another player who... You made a bet with somebody. You took Petra. Yeah, um, Espen and Erion that was with me in the booth for the last couple of hours uh, yesterday. They had... Um, I think one of them had Henrik. He's uh, still in. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, uh, I think one of them had. Uh, no, they didn't have Dana. Uh, the other guy is out. I don't remember his name. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yep. But I mean, yeah. But it's for the win. There's no uh, last longer. Oh, just the last longer, not to win. Oh, then it's okay. No. It's never nice when the. Commentators in the booth, booth uh, root for <laughs> players in the tournament. No, that's no, that's, no, no, no. but last longer. That's okay. Uh, well, actually, it's not. But so Petit, straight from the dinner break, decides to have another meal. Yeah, we didn't have that dinner break yet. No, that's right. It's not until uh, straight right before the dinner break. Well, not right before, but it's getting closer. Gonna be uh, in approximately an hour, a little more. So you might skip dinner and go and play some cash games in the one-hour break. And some of these players down here, I can understand it. I mean, we can't play live poker in uh, in Norway, Norman, as you know. But I mean, so once you come here, Tyler, it's kind of natural that you want to put in as much hours For as sure. possible. Yeah, I, I sympathize with that notion. Even though it's nice to have a good balance and there are more important things in poker, but when you get the opportunity, you know, you're like a, a kid in a candy shop and you just want to take advantage of it 24-7. And I haven't played one hand since I came on Tuesday. <laughs> but I'm itching. Daniel, raised to 16,000. Hold it uh, around to uh, Fluda in the small blind. Frodo, I've noticed in this short period of time, is incredibly deliberate just in squeezing his hole cards, if nothing else. If you take five seconds longer than you should to squeeze your hole cards over the course of a poker lifetime, even if you live to be 77, it's like living to be only 73 and a half. <laughs> That's how much time you cost off of your life and the rest of our lives. <laughs> and now he's staring down. I mean, this is a, this is a raise to 60,000. He's staring down, Daniel, I assume, off of this raise. What the heck? I'd say while we're young, but I'm no longer young. Move along. Before the Germans get here. <laughs> and then to slowly look, put together your call through four motions to the chips. You could have done that in one motion. In you knew you were going to call. In his defense, I think that was a race. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Three bets to 175. <laughs> he folds the blue blind. Back to Daniel. Uh, that's, a, that's what we like. Quick fold. Bang, bang. I like that. See? I'm in his corner. But the big stack bully got what he wanted. Even if it took longer than I would have liked. Well played. Actually, I mean, of course you can stare at... Uh, 
Daniel, but I think I, I might glance over at Petter in the big blind as well if I was f first to do this. Staring I don't think he looked at Petter at all. Yeah, I guess he didn't look at Petter. That's a, the that delay. You know, I was watching, there's a, a, a U.S. news magazine called 60 Minutes, and they did a long piece on uh, Magnus Carlsen a couple yeah. years ago before he won the, the, the World Chess Championship. But they showed him playing, and uh, other chess champions have done this. He was playing 10 matches simultaneously against 10 opponents. The difference being he could not see the board of any of the 10 matches. So he had to memorize where the pieces were on each board. He was making decisions incredibly quickly. He won all 10 matches because he's a genius. But can you imagine the difference between, uh, he could make those decisions, 10 different matches against 10 good opponents without seeing the board, and he's acting without a shot clock. And these people take forever to decide what they're going to do with a pre-flop decision. It's night and day. I wish Magnus Carlsen would come play some poker. Well, actually, he uh, is uh, quite uh, a fan of poker, and he plays a lot, evidently. And uh, he plays uh, plays online. And uh, I'm not really sure. Well, he has been outed, so I know his uh, nick on Poker Stars, one of the sponsors of this Norwegian Championship. But I'm not really sure if I'm uh, I should. Uh, Say what it is. I know uh, Eric Sheets Aver. He he has uh, he has said it on his uh, training site several times. And we have an all-in. We come back to that. And he uh, well takes it down. So anyway, uh, so he he plays poker, and uh, I know for a fact, you know. A lot of chess players have made the transition to to poker, mm -hmm. and like Eric Haber explained it to me, it's like, well, a lot of similarities, and uh, well, the biggest difference is that in chess, it's a game of perfect uh, information. You see what the players are, what the opponent is holding, and, and you see all the board with all the moves. But the thing that with poker is that it's a game of imperfect. You don't know what your opponent is holding. You know what you are holding. You see the board. Uh, so yeah, it adds another dimension, which, uh, like Eric said, is kind of appealing to uh, to chess players because it's kind of sure. about the psychology. And um, still, uh, from what I've been told, Magnus Carlsen is a very capable poker player, and uh, I know he plays a lot of cards. He did while playing the World Championship against Adnan. That he played a lot of poker uh, in between the chess matches. Or at least cards, uh, that's what's being said. But I, I guess there's some poker in there as well, along with other card games. Well, um, one of my friends in college is actually a good friend of Magnus. So he, uh, Magnus actually goes out drinking with us quite often. And uh, we basically discuss soccer and poker. Yeah. Wow. But it was not allowed to come here. I invited him, of course, mm -hmm. uh, but there, there was a sponsor issue. So uh, he couldn't go, unfortunately. Okay. That is unfortunate. So you, uh, that's a boom to poker if Magnus plays poker. It's, it's well, he does play poker. Or could play at the yeah, championship. Yeah, that would be amazing. And I know when he won uh, last year, uh, we were reading how it was, you know, the whole match for best of 12 was shown live. And people were going to be live chess on TV. I go, well, we have live poker on TV. We certainly can have live chess on TV. I said, plus you don't know those crazy Norwegians. They, 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 they had like a 130-hour long live telecast of an Arctic cruise ship, if I recall. An Arctic cruise ship. Now, we have some bad TV in the U.S., but no one's watching 140 hours of somebody steering at five miles an hour through an Arctic uh, waters. What the heck was that? <laughs> you should yeah, have seen the train, train ride. <laughs> oh, a, tra a train ride also live? There yeah. we go. Uh, we have, have some bad TV, but at least we don't do live train rides and cruise ships. You should have seen the knitting special. That was just... Knitting special? Yeah, they just show up people knitting for hours now. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's, what? No, it's well, not. I'm, I'm down on that. Well, well, we've seen some knitting for hours here at the future <laughs> table as well. <laughs> there you go. No, a lot of strange things on uh, Norwegian television these days. I guess they're out of ideas, basically. And I guess, well, we, we... <laughs> no, we're, we've been out of, and we've been doing tele, more television for even longer. We've been out of ideas for at least 25 years. Yeah. 
Precisely. And we used to have ideas. I mean, we we know we had Mr. Ed. That was a talking horse. Oh, I remember. Now, a talking horse, a horse. That's, that's of course, pretty clever. Of course, and no one can talk to a horse. Of course, that is. Of course, the best horse is a famous Mr. Ed. Keep on yakety yak the street and waste your time a day. But Mr. Red will never speak unless he's got something to say. Oh, and uh, so it goes on. Yeah. Andreas, his self esteem is back. Yeah. We, he's back to high confidence levels. That was an excellent rendition of a very clever Mr. Red theme song. I, I love that show. I love that show. <laughs> How can you not? It's a talking horse. A talking horse. Wilbur. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, 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 that was great. Back to the poker action. Petra's race from the cutoff, 60,000. Forward to uh, Caroline, the big blind. And she's all in. And it folds. A strong move from uh, Caroline. And yep. we get two new players to uh, this feature table, which must mean that we are down to uh, 32 players. Yeah, four last, tables. Last four tables of the Norwegian Championships in main C event. Yeah, in C2 we have uh, Guy Holmsen. He's one of the players, and then in C5 it's uh, Lasse Övre. Played a lot in poker with Guy. He knows his way around the, the deck. Yeah, I've had the pleasure of being at the same table with Sky Guy. Guy Holmsen. On a couple of occasions as well. It's kind of this thing switching between Norwegian pronunciations of the names and the English. Well, wow, it's uh, confusing me. He's a decent stack. Yeah, he does. Guide is from the northern part of Norway, which is of course much bigger than the southern southern part, but usually gets well, it's longer lumped into one. Just the north. Where the Starks reside, winter is coming. Or who resides? The Starks. the Starks. That was a Game of Thrones reference. Oh. See, I've, I've been behind. I'm not a Game of Thrones person. And Oh, so you're the guy. Yeah, you can throw <laughs> me out of the booth now. It's everyone else is watching it. That's good, though. We won't have any spoilers from you, then. Well, I believe someone is going to die during the next season. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a thing. They kill people in that series. Some are going to have some sex. Yeah, that too. And th there's going to be some betrayal. And there are going to be dragons. Oh, you finally mentioned something that's different than every other TV show I've ever watched. And there are going to be zombies. My stepdaughter is such a zombie fan. I wonder if she watches Game of Thrones. She watches every zombie thing on TV. Well, the zombies are not really here yet or there yet in Game of Thrones, but they're like luring in the shadows. They're, they're back there. We know that they're coming sometime. Yeah, zombies and vampires have somehow... Uh, yeah, I don't gotten get Hollywood's eye the last few years. I don't get the vampires. I don't get the zombies either, but yeah, that's just me. Well, I mean, the vampire thing was pretty popular a long time ago. I mean, Bram Stoker and uh, mm -hmm. 
it's, uh, it's had its uh, periods. It's kind of like you've had this come and gone, right? Action. Hold it around to the new guy at the table, Lassa. He folds, better folds. On the button. It will be interesting to see how much chips Guy uh, brought to the table. I think it's around the 2 million mark. The race from Steon, 65,000. In the small blind. Also around the 2 million mark. from uh, Carolini to uh, is that one uh, 50, 65 yeah quick fall from guide it says that he just has around 1 million but mm, yeah. that be correct we'll just have to wait and see back to uh, Steon it up. Now he's okay. got a stack of pinks, he's got some stacks. Yeah, okay. It's not one million. One I think I'm closer. Three, four, yeah, I didn't. Two and, two and a half million. million. Count there. Can you see one of the outer tables. Didn't we have seat one at the feature table? Is that Ashin? Or? Yep, that's right. Right there. Still alive. That's good to see. Yes, uh, managed to go deep in this uh, championship. We also have Eddie Connison at the same table with his back turned. Here we go with another surviving table. Turn in the picture. Yes. Is that one of the three women that was still in the main event? Yeah, and she Celia is all alive. Turin's messed up. We only have two left, Turin and uh, Caroline. Celia, unfortunately. And she was short stacked and she's gone? Yeah, she was out in 37th, I think. Okay. Two women left, four tables remain. Out of the 95 players who started this uh, day three. Gonna race from under the gun. That looked again pretty big. Ah, okay, 75, 2.5 XM. And we have an all in. Daniel is all in, 460,000. Karolin pulls the button to guide. He falls in the small line. And then we walk in in the big line. He folds back to Fulba. Uh, cost Froda just a little less than 10% of his massive stack. Yeah, it's getting almost two to one on the call.
friendly back and forth between the two here. They're actually discussing a uh, dispute over a parking spot they had several years ago. Still unresolved. Oh, and now it's getting a little oh. more serious. You saw that look. <laughs> that is a classic Ushka Ushka look <laughs> from Froda to Daniel. I didn't quite manage to hold the mask. Smile but straight after. I have a question. Did Froda just put his chips like in front of him, stack him to get some information, uh, get some reaction from Daniel? Yeah, well, probably. Yeah, didn't like that reaction and uh, Froda. I think he actually did. That was kind of, uh, I don't know. It's yeah. almost, you're saying, uh, an angle shoot. Yeah, yeah, it's like a yeah. forward angle movement. Uh, he definitely yeah. took that stack out. Did not move forward that much with it, but I understand what you're saying. I remember the World Series, and you probably do too, a few years back, where there was an incident about this forward uh, movement uh, thing, Norman, which uh, can sometimes be construed as searching uh, for information and... Well, I guess it was kind of, I, you saw it a lot. Uh, I mean, if you go back uh, quite a few years, there was this uh, kind of forward movement. That was very, very common. common, yeah. But and there's no reason, you know, there's just no reason to do that with the chips at all. Cause, because it can be misconstrued. And sometimes you are trying to, to, to fish for information. So I prefer it when someone doesn't do that whatsoever. It takes the gray area out of it and you don't have the argument of what's going on. Jolene, taking a small uh, break from the table. Going around. So, uh, the big vine gets to walk. level is uh, slowly coming to an end. Actually now it's uh, quite difficult for us to see where we're sitting as, uh, as some of the screens have been switched out. Seat five? Yeah. Lost so. Oh, he sat down about the same time as Guy. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I don't believe he's played a hand yet, but he did sit down at the same time. Action fold around to Guy. Now to Thruda in the small blind. Announced the race. Right, you are. Hundred from Trula. Uh, and last goals. Nine nine on flop. Did he just announce all in? Yes, he did. Wow. Well, Lassie doesn't have an awful lot of chips behind, but it's definitely an over bet. But if Lassa has, uh, has an acer. I 
think he might have an ace there. Because it looks like he has a genuine decision. Yep. I think a big ace would have called already. Yeah. You can see, you know, it's a weak ace. He's got to worry about the bigger ace. And of course, he's got to worry about the nine. Something like ace five, maybe. I was thinking ace four, so okay. it's probably an ace four and a half then, uh, taking our two brilliant lines together. No, you're right. It's an ace five. I just saw him look again, and uh, I had a better view of it than he did. Ace five off. Wow, this is a this is a tough spot if he if he does have, and by the amount of time he's mm -hmm. taken with this decision, you would think that he has an ace. than we thought, I think. Ace four, you were right. Oh, oh I'm done. <laughs> I'm going to leave on a high note. Yeah. I am seldom right on a hand. Thank you, Norman. It's been a pleasure. Now we can go. <laughs> and, uh, of course, uh, lots of doubles through. But oh. I, that's a hard decision. That's a hard decision to make because it's for your tournament life. Correct. Right? Again, I, I don't know if I'm going to make call. that call. That's a tough call. But you have to call. And uh, so. credit Froda, who, who just decided just try to push him off a hand with nothing, thinking that he'd get rid of him. Yeah, big stack bully. The blinds have gone up. We are now playing at 20,000, 40,000 with 5,000 ante. 31 players left in this main event, the Norwegian Championship of Poker 2014. Wow. Well, well played, Lasse. Well played. So the players are guaranteed at least 6,365 euros. First uh, place pays more than 154,000 euros. Anyway, I'm thinking of leaving indeed on that high note. So are it tough to get cabs out front to the airport at this hour? <laughs> Because I figure I could watch, if I get a flight in time, I can watch the final table live streamed myself. Uh, and if you, I know that you don't want to do this, but you're, you were going to do it all in Norwegian if I'm not here. If you could just, like, every third hand in English, just to keep my interest up. Well, the thing is, yesterday, Norman, we actually uh, continued in English for an hour before the uh, dinner break. Uh, just to try to hold on to the viewers we have outside of Norway. Oh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Once I leave the booth, your English language viewers are in Denny's. Uh, they're at McDonald's. They're, they're, trust me. You might be right, but if you, uh, I mean, uh, if you promise to come back, maybe they'll say. But it was awkward. So you really did do another hour of uh, yeah, English? Yeah, we did. I didn't we realize did. that. We did. Wow. But it was so awkward. It really was. But fun. Yeah, sure. In an awkward kind of way. I don't mind. But will you be back today, Norman? Oh, will I be back today? Yeah, you mean after the dinner break? Yeah. Oh, sure. I'll oh, be you back will? For a oh, while. great. We'll, we'll figure that out. Yeah, great. Uh, so, well, you are free to leave whenever you want, sir, as long as you promise to come back.
But the dinner break, still another level to go before the players are on their uh, dinner break. on uh, Fulda. Who's got a series of looks he gives, sometimes maybe unintentional, but he'd like to be the bad guy in, in most cop shows that I used to watch. Yeah, Foltz. Also Foltz a small blind. But uh, Solibari in the big blind. He goes all in, all in. But it's Joachim uh, has the effective stack. And it's not a big one. I wonder what he limps in late position with. that stack to limp in late position, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't even have a plan of what he was going to do if he got shut down. So uh, it leads me to believe that he he's not too experienced. Uh, oh, okay, I call, I think he said, yeah. So uh, we'll find out, Andreas, what uh, his holdings were. Queen Jack for Joachim. Pocket trace for Petter, so it's a coin flip. Queen Jack. Yeah. Clock comes Trey Queen. Queen. <laughs> so we lose. He's out. And a lesson learned there. Mm. Push for Queen Jack. Well, yeah, the Queen wow. Jack is with that stack. Just push all yeah. in. That's what you usually would do. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. get it all in. Put the pressure he's on from Petter. The, he's from the cutoff, and, and that's within, you know, they have these, uh, I mean, push or shove fold uh, charts. And I, I think Queen Jack uh, uh, off, off, off suit is kind of, uh, yeah, I think it's within the, in the range. In the yeah, range, yeah. That's fine. But I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if. He might have gotten Petr to fold the yeah, pocket exactly. trace, uh, so it's a lot better to just push all in and uh, put the decision on the other yeah. and the pressure on the other yeah. person. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I think he, I, I think that's uh, probably a clear show with Queen Jack yeah. from the cutoff. So. Uh, I mean, you could argue for uh, for folding it, but still. Uh, Limping it though? No, that's not so much. But anyway, he's out. I would believe if somebody has been knocked out on one of the other tables, he uh, he's out in 31st place. Gonna do some business. I'm so impressed by what she's, how she's played down here. She's a very, very, very talented player. Oh, I thought Gaida didn't have a sticker. You see, almost every player play with a sticker for <laughs> one of the sponsor, but I think uh, it was a Unibet sticker. Okay, sponsors of the Norwegian Championship, Unibet, along with uh, Petson, Petsafe, Poker Stars, and uh, Nordic Bet. I try to mix up the, what do you call it? Uh, the order? The order, yeah, every time I say it, so. <laughs> yeah. I tried to do it alphabetically, but that, you know, too much thinking. I don't like that. Yeah. So, let's round to Daniel in the big one. 
And Caroline also with her fresh Norwegian champion sticker. Unfortunately, we can't see if she's wearing the slippers. <laughs> I would have. I would have, definitely. Better for the call. The clock five eight A's. Checks. Carolina bets one hundred fifty thousand. And uh, better lets it go. Caroline is not wearing the slippers. Oh, oh you had to, you went and, oh, that was why you went and checked. Yeah, okay. and also checked on some of the stacks, yeah. Atle, which we had on the table earlier today. He still has a lot of chips. Yes, he does. About the amount uh, Firuda has, I think. Approximately. Lasse races from the cutoff. That she falls the button, 85,000, the race from uh, Lasse. And the only small blind falls. It's the only the big blind. After this hand, uh, do the newly signed uh, Norwegian-US Poker and Line Dancing Alliance. I am required by law to leave until after the dinner break. So I will take my leave after this hand. And I will return after the dinner break. That is a warning. And uh, I guess, Andreas, we will continue in English until the dinner break. But we are on our own. No parachute. Yeah, it's not fun with the parachute. You don't get the rush that you do without the parachute. So, yeah, I like that. The young calls out of the big blind. So two players to the flop. Six, ten, nine, rainbow. The young first to act. He uh, checks. Also checks behind. Queen of hearts on the turn. He's going to represent that queen. One hundred five thousand. And those are racing chips. Also plays back at Stian on the turn. Two hundred and forty-ish, two hundred and fifty. Okay. Lass is uh, telling a story here that he checked a big hand on that flop. Or saying he has a queen with a bigger kicker. Or a king jack, you know. <laughs> oh, that, well, that's a possibility as well. Oh, it could. If we're going to keep on this guessing game, I mean, could say he. Uh, 
raised pocket tents, and then in, on the rainbow flop, he checked behind, but still. It's not a possibility in this circumstance. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I'm going to. Checked behind to try to induce exactly what has happened here. Well, you that never know. That would be a great play. I do not think he has the pocket tens. Stay on calls. So 725,000 in the middle now as we see the king of spades on the river. So anyone with the jack just made a straight, that's for sure. And check from Sion. Well, now the pocket tens, they don't really look that good, but still when Sion checks here. Pocket tens would check behind there. Most definitely. No. You're right about that, but still, they don't look as good. I'm gonna say a jack for Lassen. Bets. I'm gonna stick to pocket tens. <laughs> Just for the fun of it. <laughs> All right, I'll have King Jack for last time. <laughs> oh, the guessing game is fun. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah. I'm actually but, I'm leaning towards your younger cohort, and I was thinking Queen Jack. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's really? a, that's oh, maybe I the best. Right. Yeah, I think that's probably the best uh, suggestion we've had. You know, after that <laughs> Ace Four, you're sort of an authority on this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But I'm trying for a statistical improbability yeah. for me, which is two in a row. And once again, we have to underline, we are not poker professionals. We are not really uh, like, you know, the big guys here. Uh, we are just, uh, well, we know a little, but there are so many who knows a lot more. Yeah, I must emphasize that uh, neither Stieg or Andreas can see the whole cards, unlike me. <laughs> <laughs> obviously has a decision. It's a, it's a big portion of the stack. Yeah, and he is not acting because he has been real quick about his well, decision early on. So. And he looked pained at mm. the end of this hand when the, the king came down and, and uh, lost a bet. He started rubbing his face and he looked like, boy, can I, can I call here? Can I really fold here? Can I call here? Can I really fold here? And he lets it go. So, okay, well, fortunately for uh, two of us, we'll never know what they held. <laughs> uh, if you talk to, if you talk to uh, Lassa later, maybe he'll tell you just to solve our own uh, curiosity. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, I'll take my leave. I'm also going to leave behind two of my three wedding rings. Do not touch them. If they are gone when I come back, I expect to see some money in there instead. See you after dinner. Mr. Uh, Norman Chad will be back after the dinner break. So just uh, keep watching. Might not be as entertaining for the next, uh, well, approximately 45 minutes, maybe. But uh, anyway, I guess we are going to see some uh, good poker. Pay no mind to the English with the Norwegian accent. Yeah, we have a peculiar accent in Norway. <laughs> yeah, we do. Well, <laughs> we do. We do. Not all. But we have like one famous uh, race car driver, Petter Schulberg. Oh, yes. He's brilliant. His English, so good. Just so entertaining. You can go to, uh, I'm sure if you Google. Petter Solberg, or a rally, Norwegian rally driver interview on YouTube, you'll find a lot of amusing stuff there. He's a very nice guy, very friendly, and he sure knows how to drive the car. Oh, here we see pictures from the heads up final to the left on the screen, Elisabeth Hille, or Elisabeth Hill, and on the right in the stand. Also saw the trophy that uh, finally is gonna play out uh, tonight. And two worthy 
heads up finalist there, uh, Andreas. Yeah, that's that's an understatement because those guys are they can play. Uh, Ingvar Sten, the Player of the Year, as we've mentioned, Norwegian Player of the Year 2013. Yep, and a magnificent poker year. One thing what we call Gulhoma or the Golden Hand during uh, the poker gala, hosted by the men in Oslo. That did it. Ready for the race from the cutoff. Takes down the blinds and antis. Which are 20,000, 40,000 with a 5,000 anti. I think we have to ask Lasse what he had in the hand. Just for our <laughs> own curiosity, I can't stop thinking about it. No, I think so too. Yeah, absolutely. So we're down to four tables in the main event of the Norwegian Championship of Poker 2014. We will uh, play down to final table or at least nine players we'll have to see how it progresses but still the final table will be played tomorrow and will be streamed live with whole cards so live ish yeah well it's gonna be uh, probably a 40 minute delay and it's gonna be commented by Mr. Norman Chad We will also be back after the dinner break, which is coming up after this level. Nelson, race from early position, and uh, yeah. Daniel moves all in. Sophia unfolds the button. Caroline in the small blind. Oh. She seems interested. Playing a stack of 2.3 uh, million, Caroline. Still has uh, Gerd Hansen to act behind in the big blind. Caroline folds, so does Gerd. And uh, Lasse folds. Part for uh, Daniel Stack. Absolutely. And he's happy. Here we see uh, the trophies. Can't really make out uh, which is which here. Yeah, for international viewers. Uh, that, that's what's called a king's trophy in Norway, in Norway, and or it resembles one. That's just how every national championship trophy looks like in Norway. Almost. Trophy the players get to keep for one year until we have to give it off to the newly crowned. Norwegian champion and in uh, this tournament in this case well it is on the small doll he gets to well actually he has to since the trophy was there he doesn't get to keep it at his room no 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 so it's already well he hasn't passed it along but it's still his for another well more than 24 hours, a little more. Okay, we have an all in. the um, all in from the cutoff. Caroline folds the button to guide it in a small blind. He folds. Trude, the big stack, 3.6 million in the big blind. Does have the chips to call? Yeah. And uh, 
He also has time to give this some consideration. Counts out the calling chips. I mean, this is borderline. Yeah, but Steon is aware of that. You yeah. can see him, uh, if we get the camera to switch to him, he's, uh, he's taking a pose and he's not wanting to give anything away. He's not even looking at uh, no. Thrull. No. Smart move but, by but yeah, yeah, but still, this is, this is, I think this is borderline. Yeah, this is angle shooting, definitely. Yeah. Like in Roman Chad said, very common to see. You go back, it's mirrors, but... Uh, this is a Norwegian championship, and we're deep in the main event. And uh, I don't like this from Thulba. No, but but it's, uh, I mean, I mean, it's not like uh, I, he's he's probably not aware, uh, or at least we hope so, that of this situation. He, it might be that you know it doesn't even occur to him that this could be construed as not being. Uh, well, well technically, he's not breaking any laws. No, he's but, not. Uh, in folds uh, Thulba, but. Um, but you know, it's like it's, it's kind of frowned upon. Yeah, it's frowned upon. You could say that. That's a good, a good expression. It's uh, something about etiquette, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, Thule, this seems like a very nice guy. He's been yeah. smiling at the table, and he's. I mean, so it's not really. Uh, I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt, but uh, so it's not like uh, he probably doesn't realize it. Probably. And you will often see, you know, a lot of players who uh, do think that, you know, they just don't realize, uh, I mean, not just this situation, but other things as well, that they just don't realize it's, it's, it's kind of frowned upon. But still, you're not breaking the rules of the game, but at the same time, it might be bad etiquette. So, so uh, often they, don't, they aren't even aware that they are doing these things. So they can, that can be excused, I guess. It's like, and like you said, he almost um, he did the only right thing. Yeah, there's some unwritten laws in poker. Yep, it's a gentleman's game. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it used to be though. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly! <laughs> well, of course now there is uh, a rail building. I'm sure you can <laughs> hear it even through the microphones. There, there's some screaming going on. I'm trying to find out what they are screaming about, but I think it's just some, some kind of cheering for someone. Meanwhile, at the feature table, Daniel has raced and lost uh, in the big line with the decision. Bets. Yeah, as we close in on the on the final table, we'll we'll, we'll definitely get some rails and a lot of sharing. It will only get worse. Or better. Or better. Yeah, sure. It's. I mean, it's very happy. Uh, here in Dublin, atmosphere, that was the word I was uh, scrambling for. Oh, I think they were rooting for uh, Mr. Lunning. That's what they were screaming. Ah, Mr. Payday. Yeah, Mr. Payday. I think that was what they were screaming. Lunning. That's one of those names. Yeah, it translates good into chant. Folds. He does.
And uh, Lasse continues to build on this uh, feature table. Yeah, he's done well since he sat down. It's a call against the Frode, and he doubled up. Yeah, that was a good call. He had Frode virtually drawing dead, and uh, then there was a big pot against uh, Steon in the blue cap, where the board ran out 9 10 Queen King, and uh, we speculated as to what uh, Lasse might uh, have held in his hand. And we'll get the answer for him during the break. Action fold around to Karolin. She's pondering a race. Race is to ninety five uh, thousand. Kair Hovar has been extremely quiet since joining our uh, featured table. Not surprising to me. But then again, he has a healthy stack. And he's in no hurry whatsoever. Peter folds and uh, Carolina rakes in the blinds. And antics. We've uh, just lost uh, Simon Birklund at one of our other tables, which means we are down to 29 people here in the main event of the Norwegian uh, Championship. We've seen one of the other other tables. For information, at least for uh, our Norwegian viewers, you can go to uh, donker.com and get uh, updates from the other, other tables. We'll see, also see, oh, that was uh, Vegan Igor. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, he's still in. That's good to see. He's a long-time veteran and he's a um, very capable poker player. He plays, uh, well, all, I, I would venture to say all of the games. Yeah. He's not just a one-trick pony. He is very good at... Uh, Mixed games. But definitely a uh, capable Hold'em player as well. Of course. Ferian that sat here the couple of last hours uh, yesterday, he had a sort of feud with uh, Vega going, and he told Vega that I'm gonna knock you out, I'm gonna uh, suck, suck you out actually, <laughs> yeah. out of this tournament. And uh, what happened was, of course, that Vega knocked Ferian out of the tournament. So he jinxed himself. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's that's like famous last words. Yeah, I'm gonna exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna suck you out of the tournament. <laughs> Just wait and see. Famous last words. So th that's the other thing, advice today. I mean, the first one was uh, don't celebrate before the flop. Never do. Never celebrate before the flop. And the other one is never say something like that to a player. I'm going to knock you out of the tournament. Yeah, as I just said that Geithover had been very quiet since joining our table. He raked in uh, well, blinds and antis. Shortest deck. Still Jan Scherven plays uh, 11 big blinds. He's still the biggest stack through the omission. He has plenty. He has plenty. And uh, he's been playing his stack quite well. Well, some he's been putting pressure on, definitely. Got caught with his with his hand in the cookie jar, of course, against uh, Lasse, where he had well air. 
and you say caught what is said in this cookie jar, I always think about the bear. If you've been on PokerTube and seen his, uh, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't venture to say instructional videos, but <laughs> his videos, yeah. which are entertaining. I mean, what a character and uh, the bear. If you are watching, kudos to you. I, mean, uh, I was thinking about Winnie the Pooh for some reason. <laughs> as well, but he was like more into honey than cookies. Yeah, but he's a greedy little bear. He wants, he wants it all. He wants yeah, it yeah, all. oh, he's greedy. Yeah. Yes, please. I'll have them both. Yeah. Back to the Definitely. poker action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely learning. It's learning, yeah. Let's confirm. Ivan Lunding, who was at the feature table earlier today. And it's uh, obviously still doing well in the tournament. this race gets uh, through of course I think now not uh, that long until uh, the dinner break it was scheduled to be at uh, half past eight local time but I think uh, it might run a few minutes later. The clock, I think, was stopped at one point, and uh, so maybe a few minutes later than half past eight local time, half past nine Central uh, European time. We will be on a one-hour dinner break. Players might uh, slow down a little bit, some of them at least. You know, dinner coming up. Time to regroup, get some food, which is very important to actually... I mean, it's not a bad idea. We saw Petro eating at the table not long ago, and I mean, uh, just a little refill every once in a while. It's important to, uh, to keep your head uh, clear. Yeah, and stack up on energy is always important because this game, although they're they're sitting, they're heavily concentrated all the time, so it's exhausting, both mentally and physically. Daniel is all in after a loss of race from the hijack. Finds fold back to uh, Lasse and a quick fold. So, but I mean, uh, Daniel, or, uh, or as we would say in Norway, <laughs> Daniel Romero Harmenstad. Yeah. Picks up some chips and he's done well. Yeah, but it's still, oh. still pretty short stack. Yeah, but he's slowly, slowly been building. And uh, so we see three of the trophies of the Norwegian Championship as. Uh, I've been learning, obviously, takes down the pot. I think uh, oh, I heard a question, uh, did you double up? And I think he did. <laughs> wow. So, but it's good to have those guys. I mean, we get some action from the other table. As long as they keep calling yeah. the action, that's, that's perfectly fine. So uh, we can safely say I've been learning has doubled up. And it's good to have friends. So yeah, of well done, I've been learning. Well done. Well, I'm not sure if I would say well done. They are <laughs> probably good friends and they, li like they screamed out in Norwegian, they love him. They made sure that he knows. And to translate, you are very good, was also yelled at him. Lines still 20,000, 40,000 with a 5,000 anti. Lasse races again. It's been played back at a couple of times by most notably Daniel. And he has folded on, the, on his all in move so far. Caroline might have picked up on that. 
And she is in the small blind. She might also have a good hand, of course. Of course. She's not in the big blind. And that's, they never have a good hand. I've been told by someone who's been sitting on my right for a few days now. Yeah. Mr. Norman Chad of uh, ESPN slash WSOP fame. Caroline Foles, tight in the big blind. Looks interested. Lasse Öbre. Balls. Hmm. Decides to defend his big line. We have a flop. We will soon have a flop as soon as the dealer breaks into chips. And that's a welcome sight. We don't get too many of those at this stage of the tournament. King do straight, two clubs. Cat checks, lots of checks behind. Four of hearts on the turn. And Lasse with ace five, he uh, fires out. Yeah, it was Geir who fires uh, out. Geir, I mean, yeah. Lasse calls. Oh, maybe it's Lasse with ace five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see the last card. It's the tray of clubs. Four pairs on the rear river. Flush fails. And he's going to fire again. Didn't look that big. 115,000. That's a bet begging to be called. Valley bet size. And well, he didn't. It looked like he was going to fold. And again, we'll be doing the math now. Costed 115,000 into a pot of 510. And he lets it go. Like that bet size from uh, Yad. Yeah, me too. It's it worked. good if he doesn't have the goods, and it's good if he has the goods. Exactly. But knowing guide, I think yeah, I think it's. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm on a limb here, of course, but uh, <laughs> so I'll say yeah, at least the king. As we see, Phil Balmerson, still chip leader at this table, plays 3.5 million. Colleen Fossius with a 2.2. Guide not far behind with 2.1. All the other players are below uh, 30 big blinds. Stian Shadowin is still in the short stack with just uh, 10 big blinds. <laughs> so I think uh, this man, Petr Soliberg, he has chosen his spots well. So far at this uh, feature table. Yeah, and he's maybe not been as active as we uh, expected, but he has been free bet a lot, and uh, there's a lot of other active players, most notably Frula. And Caroline, of course. So it's a tough table. Yeah, it is. And I think he's also. Uh, well, now uh, Fulda checks uh, the big blind after he died a limp from the small blind. No, I think also Petr has, uh, we take this hand first, Jack, 8-8, eight, eight, two clubs. Guy mm -hmm. leads out, 40,000. It 
might be conceivable that uh, Fulba was in the big blind. Remember that guy limped the small blind. Could uh, try to represent the Nate here. He could have an eight here easily. Takes his time. <laughs> We've sure seen this before. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, but we've been talking about players taking their time when they're not supposed to. Yeah, but still, I, I don't think uh, Phil has been out of line at all. Well, not much anyway. It's like maybe a couple of borderline situations, but still, he's... Um, I think it's uh, within the limits. And he has to stack his chips somewhere. That's true. And uh, That's a big race. races. One hundred, no, two hundred five thousand one sixty five for guide to call. So he is representing the eight. Guy calls. Yeah, he does. So a big pot brewing. Five of diamonds on the turn. Guy checks. In a hurry. Um, action is on uh, that. This will be a brilliant spot for Fulda if he actually has the goods here, because it's been caught, well, bluffing a couple of times. Yes, like I was about to say, for the sand, I think Petra has picked up on that, and Petra's one spot to the left of Fulda, waiting for a chance, but okay, once again through the fires. 250,000. Out, have to putt. So, if guide calls here, there's more than a million chips in the middle. Well, not a million physical chips, but chips worth a million. Pardon my English, or my poor attempts at English. Guy doesn't necessarily need to have an eight here. He will call you if he picks up on something. He will call you down. Yeah, and you played with him, like you said, a lot, so. So what you're saying is if he has a jack here, he'll call. Yeah. Yeah. And, or, yeah. and he does. Well, he does call. Yeah, that's what I refer to. Pay attention, Mr. Badger. <laughs> yeah, ten, ten of hearts on the <laughs> river. Yeah, but your reference was he does have a jack. Oh, was it? Yeah, that was the last thing you said. Okay, I'm not gonna argue with you on that. We'll just have to watch the replay because I'm not giving up. Still, <laughs> there's a big pot now. Checks. Uh, check, check, and we get to see mm, King Eight King for Guy. Oh my! Oh, oh he wow. tried to trap him. Yeah, he did. 
Oh, he was sure uh, Firul was going to fire the third bullet. Well, he got value on the flop and the turn, and like you said, yeah. Oh, he's such a sneaky player, this guy. Yeah, and commercial break for a few minutes. Stay with us. We will be right back. And we are back live from the Norwegian Championship of Poker main event. And it looks like uh, they are going to move. Uh, uh, I'm not really sure. I'm going to move someone. Lasse. No, we have. Uh, well. Looks like uh, something is happening anyway. in two spots, both with the Caroline, I think, uh, Lasse, anyway, closing in on uh, the dinner break. They might be chipping up the thousand chip. That might be uh, correct. Because after the dinner break, chips are, uh, no, the, the blinds and the empties are going up, so um, that might be a correct assumption, Mr. Barge. Yeah, thank you. I think it, the blinds will be 25 and 50. Yeah, I think so. Mm, yep. Qualified guess. But we'll, we'll get uh, back to that shortly. Put in uh, races to 90,000 from the hijack. Both the blinds fold back to Caroline. That's what you'd call a stare. something Vanessa selves like about that there. Not quite a time there, but doesn't look like Caroline is willing to give up quite yet. And it's inquiring about about Gaia's total chip stack. And as we can see they both got more. Two million. So if Caroline has like a very strong hand here, she's thinking about how do I get all his chips in the middle? Do I call? Do I four bet? And well, do you think it's likely that these two have played together uh, before? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. They know each other, and uh, looks like Caroline is going to bit here. And she does. Three seventy. You can't take them back, guide. That's not allowed. <laughs> you can be sorry about what you did. He, he calls. calls. Wow. 
this is cool because both players are deep and they know each other. This makes for an interesting pot. To the flop. Five jack ace. Caroline hasn't even stared at the flop. There she does. She's just watching guide. And she is first to act. She checks. They are staring each other down. I think he announced, no, he checked behind. Okay, do so clubs on the turn. And we have seen guy before trapping. I'm trying, attempting to trap. Yeah, this time he's in position though. Yeah, that's true. From uh, Caroline. Quick for the pot, yeah, and it works. Good bet. Yeah, um, Caroline is known as, uh, or Guy knows that Caroline is capable of doing a lot of plays. Uh, she doesn't necessarily need to have the gate every time. Uh, as for Guy, he's known as a sort of tight player. She's up now to almost 2.8 million. Closing in on Phil Donaldson, who is down to 3 million. He was at one point at 4 million. Yeah, it was interesting to see Froda after that pot versus Guy with the 8. Uh, he looked pretty frustrated. Uh, no, we don't know what uh, what Froda had, but it's, it's likely that he bluffed. So we will go to a short commercial break. We will uh, be back in a few moments here from uh, Ireland. So I'm all off to one person. <laughs> NM samler brede laget av befolkningen, og vi tog en prat med Ari Lunde, som representerer den eldre garde, om livet, om Toten og om NM. Jeg heter Ari Lunde, og har vært yrkesaktiv gjennom hele livet. Jeg har hatt lite ferie, er, har vært galbruker. Jeg har spilt poker i to år, jeg var her første gangen i fjor. I dag er, nå er jeg i dag to, i fjor gikk ut første dag. Så går fremover. Jeg har spilt enhet mye kort. Enhet mye kort, jeg har bestandig vært glad i å spilt kort. Visst, brits, jeg har praktisk alt, alt mulig i kortspill. Poker er ganske nytt for meg, men det er ganske fascinerende. Og kortspill er jo slik at du får aldri samme hånd. Og det er jo det er en utfordring, det er spennende. Og så en ting som er ganske viktig, det er det sosiale. Det sosiale i pokermiljøet, i hvert fall på Toten, ja, her og forresten, det synes jeg er veldig bra. Veldig bra. Det er et voldsomt arrangement. Det er helt enormt. Jeg blir imponert å se det. det vi får litt av en jobb hvis vi skal flytte til Norge. Finne de lokalitetene de finner litt i Norge som det er, det vil jeg på. Men uh, jeg ønsker jo at, uh, å få det til Norge. Det er absolutt. Ambisjonene mine er å ha det gøy. Ambisjonene mine er å ha et milje rundt meg som i treffs i. Og jeg satt på to forskjellige bord i går, og det var veldig hyggelige personer, og det, det, det gjør noe med meg. Det gjør, det gjør noe godt. Jeg har, jeg har ingen ambisjoner. Jeg er, jeg er en glad amatør. Jeg vil gjerne komme tilbake til uh, om det er i, her i Dublin eller om det er i Norge. Det er under forutsetning ut fra min uh, helsesituasjon. Så, uh, men den tenker jeg ikke, ikke så mye på, for jeg, jeg lever mens jeg lever. Poker-NM samler også en del kjente fjes rundt filten, og vi tog en prat med en av de, Per Heimli, om strategier, om damer og om kjendiser. Jeg skjønner jo det er en, 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 altså en grunn. Altså det er jo veldig mye folk som sitter med headset og, og solbriller og, og sånt. Men det, altså en ting er å få god kort, men en annen ting er jo det her psykologiske spillet egentlig. Da. Og, og de ordentlig flinke... Bokerspillene de er jævlig flinke til å lese folk også, ikke sant? Så det er jo faktisk 
ett hjälpmedel och och täcka sig till då egentligen. Nej, det var det morsamt att spela mot Triana egentligen. <laughs> inte för det, inte inte bara för det hon är er väldigt söt och väldigt hygglig, men det har varit morsamt och Karen har ju också varit lite artig. Vi jag vet inte helt hur hur flinke det är er, då, men och jag är er ju inte så jävla flink själv att göra men någon gånger så har jag tur. Uh, det har jag inte haft uh, nå. <laughs> jag blir väldigt distraherad av uh, det är er ju en del sån massagedamer som går runt och och masserar folk. Det blir jag distraherad av egentligen. Men det blir väldigt distraherad av att se andra få massage. För det är er helt vill. Det är er en öreflippmassage och det är er ordentligt som kosing. Det är er helt sjukt. Det blir lite satt utan. Och så jag var med för två år sedan och då startade vi två på dagen och då rökte jag ut klockan 11. I, I år så startade vi två, jag rökte ut halv 12 så jag har er blivit lite en halvtimme bättre. För att säga si så så øh, Morten Ram rökte ut rimligt fort, men han är er ju en väldigt flink att spela och så det är er ju øh, alltså jag följer mig som relativt som är er ganska ny i i pokergamet så för att vara väldigt sån sympatisk så ska jag säga si att jag är er den dåligaste. <laughs> Men jag är er alltid vinner. Sally är er alla taperna för det är er allt att vinna. Jag är som fyra liker alla och ju mer usympatisk folk är er, ju ända mer liker jag. Så jag är er inte liksom sån sån sur bitter till som hater. I'm a lover not a fighter. Vet du, det är er en del fina snupper uh, runt omkring här. Um, uh, men det är er inte så lätt att finna det in i den in i den mölja här så eh uh, jag kan inte egentligen helt se si någon någon specifika. Det är er en god handfull stötta snupper. Welcome back to the Norwegian Championship of Poker, day three of the main event. 1,263 players started this event, 95 made it to uh, day three. Now we are 27 players left and we are going to play it down to a final table tonight. In the booth I still have Andreas Berge and uh, Mr. Norman Chad. Welcome back. I could have sworn this was day four. This is day three? Yeah, okay. it's day I three. I got my calendar and stuff, but I'm <laughs> happy whether it's three or four. It's just terrific to be around. But you know, Norman, the first uh, day seemed like two days because the field was split in half with day 1A and day 1B. So day 1A was Tuesday, day 1B was Wednesday. Thursday was day two. 
No, day 1A was Wednesday, day 1B was Thursday. Oh, that's where I'm confused. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to give you that shirt we talked about earlier on <laughs> back yeah. once again. It goes back and forth normally, it goes back and forth. We still have the same feature t table as we had before the dinner break. The players are back. Lines are at 25,000 and 50,000 with a 5,000 running ante. 27 players remain. The average chip stack right now, 1.4 million. Folded round to uh, Peter Solibag in the small blind. He raises to 475,000. And the Daniel folds in the big blind. Just caught Lasse in the break. Um, if you remember that hand, we we're where we all second guessed what he had. Yeah. He told me, I'll tell you later, I'll tell you later, as he <laughs> rushed to the future table. Frode <laughs> Andersen, uh, still the chip leader at his table, also followed uh, by uh, Caroline uh, Fatius and Guy Hansen. Shorter stack is Jan Scheiven. He's playing just seven big blinds now, but he's been there before. And he is still here. The players are guaranteed at least 6,365 euros for... Uh, well, actually, now, first, first prize is just a little more than 154,000 euros. I always notice after a one-hour dinner break, some of the players look an hour and a half older. And some of the players only look 20 minutes older. It's an interesting phenomenon. Yeah. Better raises uh, the button. Daniel Romero Hardenstahl holds small blind to uh, Stian Scharven. Short stack in the big blind. Well, no, Stian's of course not the short stack, but still not much. Well, he's below 10 big blinds, so I guess it's fair to call him short stack. Yeah, for once, you're not online. <laughs> Got confused here for a moment. Not the first time during this uh, championship. And here you see us. Beautiful sight to see you back in the chair. Beautiful sight. about an hour and a half older. You both look about 20 minutes older. I'm aging at a much faster rate than you are. Does that scare you? No, I, I, I mean, it would. It, the first time it happened, it scared me, but you it, adjust to your conditions. So I understand the condition, and uh, I can deal with it better than uh, most. Thanks for asking. Yeah, no worries. I don't know if... Uh, Jire is staying at the City West Hotel where we're playing this, but in each room there is an iron and an ironing board. And they work. Yeah, not in our room for some reason. Oh, so I feel bad now. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm in an executive oh. suite. You share a room with Guy? No, I share a room with uh, <laughs> Motten, who's working for Dunker as well. But we did not get our uh, iron ironing board this year, unfortunately. So, you'll see him in a wrinkled shirt tomorrow. But you know, you have a shower with hot water. You can just hang your wrinkled shirts there and they'll be fine. Believe me. Really? Yeah. It, I've done that many times over the years. Sometimes it does work very well. My mother taught me that when we first traveled in Europe in the 1970s. And uh, we didn't have, obviously, no iron or ironing boards. And that's how she told us that we would make our clothes wrinkle-free. And she was right most of the time. Hmm. Still you know, must move all yeah, in. Yes. Quick call from my guide. That, uh, more than two to one to the call. So, ace queen for the guide. And the only with ace ten. But they are suited. He's uh, dominated. In danger of busting out of this main event. Mm. 
Bob comes 994. Okay, some outs to chop now. Nine on the turn. Ace or four or ten. ten. No. And he doubles up. Uh, that felt good. <laughs> So full house for uh, Stian. Card didn't, break. Didn't really hurt the guy too much. Still at 1.9 million, but uh, that must be a good feeling. He's been very patient. And once he got it in with the ace 10, he was dominated and hit one of his outs. Domination to celebration. Yeah. He had outs for the split, but just a 10 as the winner. So uh, that was kind of a miracle card. Machine at one point had more than four million in chips. Now he's at three million. He folds to uh, Masurda. He folds. Betty folds. Canyon folds to Stian uh, Shalvin on the button. He folds. Caroline in the small blind. And we have seen some confrontations between her and Guy to her left. Those pink chips are worth 100. The rumors I heard in the break was that Caroline was the chip leader at this current point, but those were rumors. Well, she couldn't have been because I think Fool is still at 3 million, so I don't think those rumors were true. Or else. And uh, Andreas, in this high tech age, I can't believe you would have to rely on rumors <laughs> on who the chip leader is. Well, I like to keep some of the excitement. You know. Guy calls out of the big line. Bob comes king 9 4. How do we the first act? So many good conversations are ruined by, Goog by Google these days. Oh, you're right. Caroline with several glances at Guy before she checks. Yeah. I was commenting this while you were on the dinner break room. Sometimes she has this Vanessa Selps like look when she scares someone down. I agree. Check, check. Nine of diamonds on the turn. You know, even pre-flop, when it was her action, there had been no action yet. She was looking at him, and he hadn't even looked at his whole card yet. So I don't understand what she's looking for when she's glancing over there at that point, before there's been any action. Four of spades on the river, a repaired board. We have seen Guy to be tricky before in a spot where he had King Eight. Uh, flopped three eights, well, two eights in the flop, that is, and uh, got some value out of Fuluba. But Harunin gets out again, 150.
calling chips. And he calls. Good call. Carolina says. Playing the board. Yeah. And, and Guy plays the board. He plays the board. So they both do. <laughs> I think uh, they're both kind of relieved there. It's like, uh, yeah, I don't think Caroline could have stood a raise. <laughs> oh. Wow, that's quite a call from Guy on the turn. He must have picked up on something. Yeah, but like you said, Andreas, these players have played against each other a lot before. Probably, that yeah. is. So uh, so they know each other well. And you obviously know Gaidrin, too. He said so. I have to believe you. Yeah. Do what you want. <laughs> uh, you would be rumors and hearsay. So uh, here we are, Norman Chad. To the left of the screen. Andreas on the right. Hi, Mom. So oh, no, no, please don't. Okay, smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. I'm just kidding. My mom's not watching. She's not? No. Do you believe mine is? She might be. Boy, both of them still exhilarated from that chop pot. They haven't stopped talking <laughs> since they took back their chips. <laughs> Tables left here on the main event, and we are down to 24 players. We are going to be at three tables. And there's the pay jump up to 7,275 uh, euros. We might also have a redraw at three tables. They did that in the PLO. Yeah, it happens. I'm a big fan of the redraw at three tables. Yeah. I'm actually one of the forefathers of it. Uh, I think I thought of it first. Uh, I was playing a uh, four-table tournament, a uh, maternity ward in the 1960s in a local hospital. And uh, people got tired of each other. And so I said, let's, when we get down to three tables, let's switch it up so people can have new players to play with. That's amazing. Wow. I would never have believed that then. If you hadn't told me yourself. It's true as I sit here. Fill this all in. After Petra had raised. Well, I mean, uh, Petr had the effective stack there, so, uh, and uh, with no one left behind to act, so we just shoved it in. And here are beautiful trophies. One of these. The main event trophy. Unless I'm seeing quadruple. Could be. Yeah, I was at the player party last night. That was fun. Thanks to you, Andreas, who kindly let me have a few hours off from this live stream. I appreciate that. Yeah, no worries. And also, they serve some weird tasting mushrooms at the dinner at this uh, event, so that might be it. Oh, they did? Yeah. Uh, 
Petr tries again, races to 100,000 from under the gun, and this time it works. So uh, this young man, Daniel Romero Hermelstam, he's been uh, patient, but still he's chosen his, cho chosen his spots well, I think, at this uh, feature table. And uh, I'm not really sure we might... <laughs> Is there a soccer game going on at one of the other screens? <laughs> no, not this late. No, well, we are uh, not sure if they are playing hand for hand. Oh, I think we might be down to 24 players already. Yeah. That was fast after the dinner break. They were 27 when they came back, and now we are down to three tables, 24 players. Well, with a belly full of food, Everybody it's uh, easier to muster the strength to shove your remaining chips over the line. And that can sometimes be dangerous. So, the remaining 24 players guaranteed at least. 7,275 euros. So it looks like you were right, Andreas. There's going to be a redraw. And uh, we are going to take a short break here from uh, the Norwegian Championship of Poker 2014. I'm Steve Moon, together with uh, Andreas Berge and the one and only Mr. Norman Chad. We will be back after a short break.